How about 20? Well, I have a rule that if I do sell a card, that my maximum I can reinvest in cards is 50%. Super cool story. The dude just kept building on experience after experience. He opened that, he bought a homestead, he adopted a kid. No. He had a PSA 7 Mickey Mantle rookie. That is a really big vintage card. Oh. We are here at Carmine Trading Post. Carmine We're Trading in Car Post. Carmine, Texas. It's on like our way. Whole city built around antiques and collectibles. We like collectibles. <laughs> hey, hey. Right. How are you? Howdy, howdy. Did you ever buy these? As a I kid? did. I bought so many of those. Revco and Eckerd's, yes. and you'd go and just. What's the newest Fleer set? Exciting stars, record setters. I mean, they came out with everything. Everything to KB Toys. KB Toys. We were shopping there as a kid with my grandpa. Toys R Us. Is it just me or does every antique shop in America smell the same? You know, that's what you like to see. Cards in a Ooh. real estate report binder, but hey, what set? 66. Okay. Who are we looking for here? There's some rookies we might be looking for. Unlike a mantle, I mean, considering this is, the condition is pretty good. I mean, Except for Felipe Alou, got bit, <laughs> you got eaten by a dog. Sandy Alomar. Richie Allen. I wouldn't mind like just putting, I'm putting together a 66 set. This could be a little starter. Mm. Nobody's asking for this. I guess we could go ask him. Bobby Bragan. There you go. What would you, what would you offer for something like that? Uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks yeah. yeah. Old Baltimore Orioles. Tenant, seen better days. Ooh, here's some more cards, Ty. What you've been looking for. There you go, football. Okay, let's play a little game. Can okay. guess any single one of these? Great. Plays, played for the Indians in 1991 as their catcher. Sandy Alomar. Good job. Junior. Okay, enough of that. Some football junk. Oh, you found an 800 count box, didn't you? 92 Flare Ultra. Mm. Uncover every. Oh, yeah, it's all junk wax stuff. We got some old Beckett's. Jim Abbott went to Michigan. Michigan. Tops put out a magazine. Everybody was kind of putting out magazines in the early 90s during the card boom, and this is the Tops magazine. Sometimes it's cool because they'll have uh, free baseball cards inside. So, this is exactly why we stopped. We're traveling across Texas, and we look forward to popping in to find little mom and pop shops like this. You just never know what you're going to discover. $24. How about 20 How about 20 Okay, bye. Well, I just got my license renewed and they had to take my picture like four times. So you got your hair cut recently is what you're saying? No, no, no. It just, <laughs> I don't know what it is about me and the DPS. I never take good pictures. Well, I will take the... All right. Well, you can have the full too. Don't need it. How often do you have sports cards coming in here? Uh, not very often. Yeah? I've got a big old uh, cardboard stand-up of Mark McGuire in the back. Unfortunately, those cardboard stand-ups don't last in the heat. My idea is to put them on plywood and glue them to it. Mm. And he can stand up and hang on the wall for somebody who likes Mark McGuire. Yeah. So when someone comes and sells something to you, and you know an item's worth a hundred bucks, what does an owner of an antique store look to pay? Seventy? Oh, uh, Fifty? What do they want to pay for it? If it's worth 100, you know it'll sell for 100. What do you try to pay for it? 50? As little as you can. <laughs> I mean, it's like you go out and buy a car. Yeah. You try to get the best deal you can. There you have it. A simple but wise strategy. Just try to get the best deal you can. And then again, I Profound. mean, do you want it or not? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, that was productive. We uh, found a little binder of 66 tops, kind of a little starter set, maybe just a bunch of commons and stuff, but for 20 bucks, why the heck not? Let's, let's buy them and put them in a binder and have some fun with them. I don't dig through dumpsters very often, I promise. Hello. Okay, so you're probably wondering why I'm here in a dumpster. These are the depths that we'll go through to find the next lead. We're here in Carmine, Texas. We stopped at a cool antique store, bought some cards from Martin, and he mentioned a basketball hall of fame right around the corner. 
We went there, it was closed down because the former owner, Bob Springer, former Texas Hall of Fame basketball player died and his wife owns this building and we got connected through a couple antique stores to this spot right here. And we're trying to figure out how to get access to uncover what's in that museum. And so there's a phone number up front. We're gonna call Mrs. Springer and see if we can uncover what's hidden in that basketball museum. You never know. This building here where a lot of the antiques were stored was basically up to the ceiling and Bob was apparently a collector. And so some of that overflow went into the museum. And so, I mean, shoot, here we are. There's some magic and Pokemon cards in the dumpster. There's a Spearow. Look at that. 1962 to 92, the winning tradition in honor of coach Don Coleman. There you go, 1986, New Force, Sports Illustrated, Kim Olajuwon Magazine. <laughs> Roster of classy freshmen. There you go, as they can say, go. All right, so I'm calling, I think, Karen Springer. I just took a picture of her phone number up front, so let me type this in. Hello. Hello, is this Mrs. Springer? Yes. Hey, how's it going? This is, uh, my name's Ty. We're actually, funny enough, we got connected to you through some people in the antique malls around here and right. and I was just curious what you're doing with the stuff in the in the Hall of Fame in the museum. Oh uh, well we're eventually gonna sell it. Right now we're just trying to find a place to move it to. Oh gotcha. Gotcha. Is that something you'd be willing to kind of sell through now or no? Um well my son's kind of taking care of that. Okay. So uh uh you know we would have to talk to him and see what he wanted to do. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. We've sold a, a lot of, of the cards, so we still have some. Okay. Uh, do y'all do anything besides cards? I mean, do we, you do... Uh, we do cards. We do some memorabilia. We do, uh, honestly, the people that we work with buy just about everything, so... If you could give me your uh, name and yeah. number and stuff, I can get back with you. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See ya. Bye-bye. Wow. We're that close. So I just got done having some great barbecue with Thai, sweet tea, total Texas staples, but the reality is I'm taking Thai to a secret place in Brenham, Texas, Bluebell ice cream. He's never had it before, it's gonna be amazing. There's a baseball museum at the Bluebell Museum. <laughs> baseball museum? Baseball ice cream, don't they go perfectly together? Come on. And you're welcome for me bringing you here, by the way. I'll just say that now before we even walk in. Some things you never forget, like your first day at school, the first time you soloed on two wheels, your first love, or your first taste of Bluebell ice cream, because the best tasting ice cream in the country is made with fresh milk from cows who think they live in heaven. You think if we wear these into the factory, that we'd be able to slip in and start making ice cream? I think we'll fit right in. Well, you're too skinny. I'll fit right in. <laughs> oh my gosh, so this was my high school baseball coach, Arlington Heights High School in Fort Worth. He was a huge influence in my life. He was a great coach, a great man, and uh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Inducted in 2013 to the Texas High School Hall of Fame. Justifiably so. We were really good. He was a really great coach and we were a really good team. Amazing. Love it. Are you in there? No. That was four years after I graduated. But we set the table. We were the first team at that school to go to the playoffs in like 15 years in 1991. Went 91, 92. And the tradition, I don't think they've missed the playoffs since then. That's <laughs> so awesome. They're man. really good. Magnolia table, silos, Waco, Texas. They are everywhere. Unbelievable. Creamy, feels like it just came off of the factory line. I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. Okay. You didn't think about that very good because you don't have a hand to eat with. I know, that kind of, that's okay. You're driving because we're on our way to Conroe. We got to go finish this up. Let's go look at another collection. Can I give you a secret? Sure. Making good ice cream flavors? Sure. You pick a flavor that you like, so if the ice cream's not good, you have a fallback plan. <laughs> Caramel brownie. You know you can't screw up a caramel brownie. Right, right. 
In a few weeks, you're going to see how we acquired some amazing new modern cards. A few of them are pictured right here. We've sent all three of these to SGC to get graded. Which one of these three does not get a perfect Gym Mint 10? After spending most of the day on the Texas highway and getting our fair share of ice cream and antique stores, it was time to make our final stop of the day in Conroe, Texas. So we're here in Conroe, Texas, and we're about ready to meet the owner of Cardboard Heroes who did something insane. He sold some of his top cards in his collection to pay for a child. How crazy is that? Pretty nuts. Let's go meet him. Brett. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks for having us today, man. Yeah, Appreciate it. Thanks for coming to Cardboard Heroes. Yeah. Like, yeah, nice, nice to meet you to both. Meet you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. How long have you been open? Great. We opened up in July. Okay. And so not too long, but yeah. it's going great. Yeah, I'm going really well. So far, so good. So far, so good. yes. Dude, I'm already seeing like crazy cool cards. <laughs> Just this is always showcase. my problem. I have to say, Mike, focus on the person, not the card. <laughs> No, you can't awesome. do it. I love it. It's, a, it's about the cards, right? No. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what's going on here. I mean, what was your intent when you opened the store? What was your objective with kind of the... So our goal here is to create an environment where um, dads and sons and moms and daughters can come in and, and grab boxes and cards of their favorite sports person. Yeah. and sit over there on the couch and open them together and just, um, you know, that that's the part of the collecting that I loved. You know, my dad and I did the same. I started collecting when I was six and so it's just been such a big part of my life that um, that um, that's what I want to recreate and I know my the Solomon, same thing, he wants to recreate that, so. So I've heard rumors, Matt obviously knows you're a good friend of yours, producer, yeah. that you funded this shop with a card or two. Is that card or two, story? yeah, yeah. So uh, Solomon and I, um, about two years ago, we jumped in on Jalen Hurts early on okay. because he's a Houston kid and, and we sold um, one of his most important cards in January and that's one of the reasons why we were able to open, open up, yeah. Crazy, was that the first time you had sold a card to fund something? So like I said, I started collecting when I was six and then my wife and I, we started dating in high school and um, I actually sold my 84 Donruss set back when I was 17 to take her to the prom. That was a set that changed everything. It was. That Madden Lee rookie card, yeah. man. Um, uh, I mean, it's still one of my favorites. In fact, I'm trying to collect the whole set in PSA 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's-, it's That's no easy time. And I'm trying to do it by opening boxes and doing, nah. it, doing it myself. Just yeah. a little out of that sealed wax up? I, I just bought one at the National. Just, really? uh, yeah, yeah, so. And then I actually had, um, bought my wife's wedding ring with selling cards too. I'm just so impressed with what Brent did. It, there's real stories with real things that he turned cardboard into for his family. It makes me want to just go invest a little bit more strategically with the way I spend money in sports cards. So basketball, soccer, and um, UFC, and some stuff down there, then basketball here. We've got baseball in through here. We wanted to um, have a lot of singles, and so that's one of our goals, and eventually have it organized to such a way that you can say, hey, I, want, I collect Ozzy Smith, and that um, we can go back and just grab a big box of Ozzy Smith. So that's, that's the goal, um, and then um, as we move along, we've got the baseball, and then we have football. Um, I'm more into vintage baseball and uh, modern football. That's kind of my niche. Okay. And then Solomon um, is uh, really, really um, good at um, prospecting for baseball, and he knows all the ins and outs of who's going to be good. So yeah. I just say, hey, Solomon, who should I buy? And, you know, <laughs> he, he knows. So what's kind of the mindset as a shop owner buying stuff from somebody. And there's a lot of people that see this and they think I got to sell cards to card shops to fund my collection. What's your mentality as a buyer right now? Are you being more aggressive? Are you being more hesitant? How do you approach it? Some stuff I'm, I'm more aggressive on, you know? Okay. So for instance, uh, Aaron Judge, you know, pre-60s, you know, pre-70s, you know, vintage, um, you know, that's what we're, because that's what people want, you know, and, and more, and even more than anything, you know, it'd be nice to have it, it's nice to have it in the showcases. You know, we uh, take a lot of pride in our, in our Astros out here, so. Uh, I've noticed from the showcases, yeah. yeah. We have a good time watching the Astros and collecting them as well, you know, they're baseball cards, so. When buyers walk in and they see a price tag on a card in a shop, do you expect them to negotiate with you? I do. Um, I expect them to definitely, you know, bring up, you know, any past sales, you know, and and, and 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 especially on cards that are more common. Definitely expect them to 
you know, counter and give me an offer, you know, and, and, and what they can pay for and what they're willing to pay for. So last question, a year from now, what do you dream about with this card shop? I think more than anything, you know, I want I want people to look back at this shop and be like, you know, I had some of the best times in my life here. We definitely want to give back, you know, we want to we want to be able to, you know, make a bigger impact on, you know, what what's more important sometimes, and you know, we want to, uh, you know, offer the, the, the families and kids, yeah. you know, cards that they either grew up watching when they were, you know, younger or and now as they're, you know, as they're older and even kids, you know, that they're, they're you know, they're heroes that are on cardboard. Totally. You know? So I love it. Yeah. I love seeing the way Brent and Solomon balance each other out. I mean, Solomon has a unique set of skills, wants to be there every day, grind it out with the customers. Brent has the more strategic high level view. Let's find out the money. Let's get the big cards in here. They complement each other really well. How'd you go? vintage baseball and modern football. I went to school at Texas Tech, and so Mahomes was there, and so I got to watch at least three three ball games, maybe four ball games of his a year, and I said, man, this guy's gonna be amazing. And thankfully, because he didn't play his first year, he um, his prices were relatively low. And so I just started, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell some of my vintage stuff, and I'm gonna go all in on Mahomes, and um, that's what I did. It, it worked out pretty good, yeah. So what did you sell Mahomes to pay for? Um, so, my wife and I, um, when COVID hit, the kids, you know, we were in just the regular suburban house and um, when we were all locked down, we were like, man, we want to live on some acreage and so sold a, sold a few of them and we went out about 15 miles away and bought some acreage and that's where we are now. So. Funny how a lot of guys in the hobby will sell cards to fund other cards, right? They, they just kind of rotate those dollars in the yeah, hobby. True. You're selling cards to rotate your life and like keep right. your life going and do wonderful things with that. Right. I just, it's so cool that you've been able to do that. Well, thank you. Well, I have a rule that if I do sell a card that my maximum I can reinvest in cards is 50%. Okay. And so if I, if I, if I make some money on that, I look at it and say, I can reinvest in cards 50%, that's the most, and then the rest has to go to something, you know, I say more important, but you know, family and yeah. life and, you know, things like that. You said it correctly the first time. More yeah, that's a very <laughs> good balance. Was like, that influenced by the wife? Is that a deal you made? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Such a smart strategy to take cards, and the way he does it is, you know, selling something, taking half that money, putting it back into cards, taking half, and doing something great for his family. Absolutely genius. Smart guy, he wants to stay married. Yeah. He likes yeah. being married. Yeah. I've got a good one, so um, I, gotta, I gotta make sure I listen. You have a large family too, right? We do, we have nine kids. Oh um, my goodness. Six biologic and um, three adopted, so. Can you bring some cool cards out and show yeah, us? Is that course. cool? We'd love to. The Corey Seager Bowman First Auto came back with perfect tens. The Derek Henry Blue Prism rookie came back as a 10 as well. But the Tyreek Hill Orange Prism Rookie came back as a mint 9.5. Be sure to check out GoSGC.com for your own grading needs. All right, so you laid out some ridiculous cards. Yeah. So, I gotta see this man. Let yeah. me see this. See. Maybe we can start there. Mickey Mantle Rookie 51 Bowman in a 7, which is amazing. But I see this and I'm like, do you have a 52 Tops Mantle? I used to. I've, I've, I've actually had two in, in the past. Okay. And I, one of my collecting goals when I got back into collecting back in 2008 was to collect the entire 52 set, PSA 7 or above. Oh. At the very beginning, when I started, the a PSA 7 was about 35. And I, I was able to get um, Willie Mays, um, uh, uh, all, all, all the big cards, um, other than the mantle. And I almost bought it, but then. I couldn't justify spending that much. Even of course, like fast, right, right. Fa fast forward to when I finished the set, a, a 57, um, uh, excuse me, a PSA 7 was selling for about 140, 150. So I, I was like, okay, well that's, that's not gonna happen. And so I finished the set with a PSA 4.5, which was good enough for me. And then um, we felt called to adopt. And in 2018, I sold that to help fund our the whole, uh, set. The whole set. So yeah, we adopted our little daughter from um, China. Are you ready to finally meet Lucy? <laughs> what a cool 
cool story. Yeah, that is amazing. Amazing story. Super cool story. The dude just kept building on experience after experience. He opened that, he bought a homestead, he adopted a kid. How can that not be inspiring to people that are in cars buying crazy cool stuff? Absolutely awesome. So you sold the 52 in around 17, adopted a child, put the money back into Mahomes. Correct. Sold yeah. Mahomes to get a house. Correct. Yeah. Probably at the same time, put that money into Hertz. Correct. Hertz helped fund this. Correct. Okay, who are you buying next? So we can both put our money into it. Yeah, I got some things my wife would love to do. <laughs> okay, so we cannot show our wives this episode because after seeing Brent sell cards for homesteads. We would be in so much trouble. We'd be, we'd be done. That's, That's like an incredible stair step that you've used to kind of fund your hobby love, but also do things impactful for your family. So Thank cool. you. It's been a blessing for sure, no question about it. And I did keep a, a few of my homes still, um, even though I sold a, a bunch. So we've three got one, one of ones. Yeah, three, <laughs> just, just three one of ones here. Oh, he's making me realize I should have gotten my home so much earlier. Okay, so you sold a bunch, but like, how many did you sell? What? Well, at one point I had 16 um, of the true RPAs from National Treasure. That's all. An RPA stands for Rookie Patch Auto, and it's usually one of the more sought after cards from incoming rookies. It includes an autograph, a patch, which is like a piece of a jersey, and it's usually serial numbered. Even more sought after is the higher end RPA from a release like National Treasures or Flawless, typically because quality of those releases is unmatched. To have 16 of the Mahomes RPAs, that is mind blowing. At the time they were only selling for about a thousand bucks when they first came out. Then I bet COVID hit and you're like, wait a second. Well, I, I kind of panicked at first and so I started selling a few because okay. they, they went up to about 10 grand and I was like, well, COVID's gonna, it, the initial thought was the economy's gonna not do yes. well, right? Right, right? And so I did sell a few um, then, but then I still had like 13. Yeah. It's amazing what happens when you win Super Bowls. Yes. You wouldn't have that feeling. No. <laughs> uh, the shield is just awesome. Yeah. So interestingly on Select uh, back then, um, you know, the, the die cuts were um, pretty rare. Now mm -hmm. they're pretty common. But in 2017, um, there's three versions of most players um, in Select. So they have a, a what's con concourse yeah. and then premier and then field level. Yeah. Well, for some reason, Panini did not include a concourse for Mahomes. So there's only two. There's the premier, hmm. which is this one, and then there's the field level. Man, are you serious? The die cut black one on one prism? I had no idea there was only two of those. And so this is considered his base select one of one, even though it's die cut. Hey guys, we have got a live auction coming up. We really hope you can be there because we're going to have some great cards, great vintage, great modern. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll see some cards from this guy, Ben from episodes 29 and 30. Are you excited about selling some cards? It was fun to curate it, but I'm excited to get in some of your collections and see it in a different place. Awesome. Well, hopefully you can be there. We'll see you there. Let's get back to the show. So tell us a story about this Venezuelan. Tops made four different versions of 1968. So one is the regular version, uh, one is Milton Bradley, exactly, one is Opeachy, and then several years they kind of alternated, or, or not every year, but they um, sent certain cards down to, and produced them um, for uh, Venezuela. And so you could only get them there. And so I actually have a collecting buddy that lived down there at the time, and he, you know, as a kid, would open them up, and he, he's got this amazing Venezuelan collection. And so I see him at some of the shows. Um, this one came along, and um, I saw it and it has like the single best front of any. It looks perfect. Uh, I'd say it's probably a PSA 8 maybe. But the interesting part of it is in Venezuela they also sent with the cards a little booklet that you were supposed to take the card and put glue on the back and stamp it on there. They weren't so, collectible back then, mm -hmm. who cared? It was just for fun, you know, oh, yeah. people were putting them in their spokes, you know, that's, that's what we did. And so it was more of a game and, and the goal was to get every single card in that little booklet. And so even though it's a perfect front, it's got glue on the back, which... But I love that, actually. Me too. It affects the value, of course, but as a collector, I like this better because it tells the whole story. Well, there's not many of the Venezuelans, right? I mean, how many other? 35 that have been graded by PSA. The highest is a five. It's pretty low yeah. pop. Yeah. So 
pretty rare card, so. So we're looking at all these modern 101 football. We've got great vintage baseball. And oh, by the way, over there, Babe Ruth autograph ball. And a Babe Ruth ball and a Yankees early mantle signature ball, a Hank Aaron PSA 8 rookie, a Shohei Otani autograph 101. <laughs> Some more hurts for, for location number two. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, those will help fund your next one. He had a PSA 7 Mickey Mantle rookie. That is a really big vintage card, and it looked really great. He also had a PSA 8 Hank Aaron rookie. Mind-blowing stuff. It's a good day. This is for my oldest son, Jackson. Russell Wilson signed helmet. Well, you close down the shop. We're still in here buying stuff. Well, you know, this is why we do it. So cool. we're, we're, I knew when Brent mentioned that you guys were coming, I knew it was uh, going to be a fun time. So appreciate you all coming out. Thank you, brother. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Brent, thank you, thank you sir. No. Cheers, man. Or well, actually, only if you're giving it to your son, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. You seriously yeah, gonna get, to get to fight over the two? Yeah. Man, that's an amazing card. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Let me see one of one, Russell DK. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> that's an insane card. That becomes the best card in his collection. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Cool. So what are we going to do? Go eat Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Go eat Chick-fil-A. <laughs>